Two years ago, a woke bank called for the resignation of President Trump, citing his supposed involvement in the J6 insurrection. Today, that woke bank has imploded, and President Trump is more popular than ever. What happened? That is what we're going to find out. The ultra leftists over at Salon.com have put up a rather panicked piece concerned that Trump's appeal within the Republican Party continues to rise even as his legal issues mount. The latest is coming out of New York where prosecutors are signaling they are prepared to indict Trump in the Stormy Daniels hush money case. I kid you not. New York Democrats are still obsessed over Stormy Daniels. Remember the creepy porn lawyer, the now disgraced Michael Avenatti? Yeah, well, they're still trying to get Trump on all of this. It's stunning. And I have to say, I think this writer for this piece at the salon.com seems to get it, at least in part. There's a one-to-one -one correlation between the attempts to basically assassinate Trump legally, weaponize the legal system against him, and his rising appeal within the party. This writer recognizes that as long as the piling up lawsuits are interpreted as nothing more than continued witch hunts against Trump, his persona as a populist reformer trying to take down the system only enhances. It's fully corroborated. The more the powers that be try to take Trump out, the more they corroborate him as their number one threat. This is the power of populism that we've talked about on countless occasions on this channel. The more the political class tries to persecute Trump, the more they confirm that he is their greatest fear. And so we shouldn't be surprised by the fact that the more Trump is politically persecuted, the more he rises in popularity, and that's exactly what's happening to the dismay of leftists in the permanent political class. And we have to remember that after the FBI raid of his Mar-a-Lago home last summer, Trump was raking in an average of a million dollars a day in donations. It was amazing, but predictable given this calculus between political persecution and populist fidelity. Another example of this was the recently released single from the J6 Prison Choir, a group of people locked up for their alleged involvement in the J6 riots. President Trump recites the Pledge of Allegiance in the recorded song. He's actually listed as the composer. He recorded his part of it at Mar-a-Lago, and the song is actually trending as number one on iTunes. Again, we have to remember that Trump's popularity has actually increased since J6. Even CNN has admitted that. And it's increased largely because Trump has demonstrated an uncompromising loyalty towards the protesters, particularly the ones who are locked up. Even after every Republican turned their backs on them, Trump remained loyal, even promising to pardon them upon his reelection. And that strategy has really been quite brilliant because we have to remember that Trump brought in millions of new voters into the Republican Party. Voters that were up until his candidacy completely disenfranchised from the political process. They didn't care. They didn't have a candidate that they thought cared about them. This is what made his Trump's recent visit to East Palestine, Ohio, so significant. While Biden dithered in Ukraine, demonstrating he didn't care a whit about his own citizens, Trump was there bringing relief, food, water, cleaning supplies, all bought and paid for by him for the residents of East Palestine. Trump was seen as a man of the people who the establishment wants to get rid of precisely because he's a threat to their power, a power they maintain irrespective of people like those in Ohio. And that's going to be very difficult for anyone else in the Republican Party to replace, including Ron DeSantis. No single Republican has been able to get the vote out in rural America like Trump. So much so that it completely overwhelmed Hillary Clinton's urban and cosmopolitan advantage in 2016. And by the way, Trump just got a huge vindication as of today. One of the wokest virtue signaling companies out there, a rabidly Trump-hating company, just learned a very painful lesson of what happens when you try to virtue signal at Trump's expense. You're going to love this. And you know what else you're going to love? A t-shirt just like this one. But you got to act fast. Our merch store is getting huge makeover. We got brand new designs coming to the Turley Talks merch store in the next month. And that means we need to make room. So if you want a cool shirt like this one, you need to click on that link below right now. All the top designs featured on the store.turleytalks.com site 
are limited quantity and won't be available for long. So make sure you click on that link below right now and grab one of these incredible designs for yourself or a fellow patriot and stand boldly for truth. Don't miss out on owning one of these amazing designs before they disappear forever. Click on that link below or go to store.turleytalks.com. One of the biggest moments of schadenfreude that President Trump must be experiencing is from the news today that the next bank to go under, riding on the woke coattails of Silicon Valley Bank, is none other than Signature Bank. It's being widely reported that state regulators have officially closed the New York-based Signature Bank, making it now the third largest failure in U.S. banking history. This, of course, coming just two days after authorities shuttered Silicon Valley Bank, which we did our very first video of the day on. But what you're going to love in all of this is that Signature Bank was one of the woke financial institutions that cut ties with President Trump after J6. Signature Bank, along with Deutsche Bank, canceled President Trump's personal accounts that he had with them. And not only that, Signature Bank actually called for President Trump to resign. For their first time in their 20-year history, this woke bank, this virtue-signaling cesspool, issued a formal comment on the nation's politics to call for President Trump's resignation. I wonder what they've been thinking after Tucker Carlson released the video footage of Capitol Police and security guards escorting J6 protesters throughout the Capitol building. Well, we won't know what they think because they're now out of business. David Schaefer, chairman of the Republican Party of Georgia, tweeted out, Signature Bank famously closed President Trump's bank accounts to signal its virtue. Well, what do you know? Go woke, go broke. And guess who sat on the board of Signature Bank? The ultra leftist former Democratic congressman, Barney Frank, freaking Barney Frank. And many commentators are pointing out the obvious and ironic fact that one of the co-sponsors of the Dodd-Frank financial reform law 2010 that was supposed to protect us from another GFC, the global financial crisis like we had in 2008. Ironically, he's sitting on the board of a failed bank. I mean, with adults like this in charge of our banking system, is it any wonder that we're the laughing stock of the world right now? Is it any wonder that this whole thing is collapsing when you have dithering idiots like this in charge of our financial institutions? So all of this is to say, gang, fear not. I know there's a lot of craziness and turbulence going on out there, no question. But in the end, when all is said and done, Trump is surging. And woke institutions that once denounced him are imploding. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on a new Middle East political order rising. It's going to absolutely stun you. So make sure to click on that link and I'll see you over there. God bless.